guys, Colin here. Now, if you've been in guitar gear for a while, you've probably heard about the buffered versus true bypass debate in reference to effects pedals. There's a lot of misinformation out there about these terms and the advantages and disadvantages of each, not least perturbated by companies who are looking to sell their product by insisting the way they do things is the best way. So, I'm going to make things nice and simple and explain the difference between buffered and true bypass and when it's advantageous to use each. So let's start off with true bypass. This term is often shouted from the rooftops by companies who are looking to communicate that their products are high end and are best for your tone. Many will even write it on the pedals themselves. So what's so good about it? True bypass refers to a situation where the input and output jacks of an effects pedal are linked directly to each other while the effect is inactive or in bypass. This means that none of the electronics or components on the circuit board are affecting the signal going through the pedal. Off means off. Buffered bypass, on the other hand, refers to a situation where even when the effect is inactive, the signal still travels through a selection of components on the circuit board called a buffer. The buffer is commonly used to strengthen the signal and to change it from high impedance to low impedance. Ultimately, what's coming out of a buffered pedal isn't what went in. So that must settle it, right? True bypass is obviously better because it leaves your signal unchanged and your tone uncoloured. Except it's not quite that simple, and true bypass isn't always the holy grail of tone protection it's often claimed to be. In a situation where you're only using one or two true bypass pedals and you've got short cable runs between your guitar, pedal board and amp, then yes, true bypass is everything that it claims to be. The signal reaching your amp through those pedals will be just the same as if you'd plugged your guitar directly into the amp. However, if you are running many true bypass pedals and have very long lengths of cable between your guitar, pedal board and amp, then you're in for some trouble. Long cable lengths are a problem on their own. Inside an instrument cable, you have a copper core surrounded by an insulation material surrounded by another layer of copper, which works as an electric shield. Now, one long length of metal running alongside another long length of metal with an insulation material in the middle can be referred to by another name, a capacitor. Capacitors are often used in audio systems to bleed treble out of the signal. We see this in the tone controls of our guitars, and the guitar cable is no different. The longer the cable, the more the capacitance, and the more high end we lose through the cable. Add to that a whole bunch of true bypass pedals where you're going through the connections, through the switch, and back out the other side, and your once wonderful signal is going to be plenty degraded by the time it hits your amp. To prove this, I've got a couple of short 3 meter cables like this one. That's around 10 feet if you're using old imperial measurements. And to contrast that, I've got this cable that I've made up here. Now I've not measured this one out precisely, but I'm going to estimate there's at least 20 meters on this cable. Uh, that's about 66 feet, and I'll be connected to another 6 meters length of cable that's going to the amp at the moment. So I can connect that in there and total that up to about 86 feet. <laughs> The inclusion of a buffered bypass pedal early in the signal chain, however, can potentially save the day by strengthening the signal and dropping the impedance so it plays nice with other pedals, although maybe not fuzz pedals, but that's a story for another day. We can ensure that the signal will not degrade past the point of the buffer. Your signal will retain its high end. Not all buffers are the same though. Many poor quality buffers will add detrimental effects to your sound, crushing it, compressing it, reducing the definition and clarity. It's often unclear as well what the quality of a buffer within a pedal is from looking at it from the outside, and perhaps you're happy with all your true bypass pedals and don't want to trade one out for one with a buffered bypass. In that case, you can pick yourself up a high quality standalone buffer like this brand new bona fide buffer from TC Electronic. These are designed to be high quality transparent buffers with low signal to noise ratios and this one will even revert back to true bypass should the power to the buffer ever get cut. A cool little safety feature. A dedicated buffer will allow your true bypass and long cable runs to work to their full potential without any degrading through the connections or unwanted capacitance effects. <laughs>
The best place for a buffer in your signal chain has a lot to do with the other pedals you are running, so a bit of trial and error is probably your best approach. However, good rule of thumb is to have it as early in the signal chain as you possibly can. A buffer buffers everything that comes after it, not what came before it. So you want the buffer to see your guitar signal before significant lengths of cable are used. The last thing I should mention is that there's no real issue with running multiple buffered bypass pedals together in a signal chain. Essentially the first buffer that the signal sees should be the only one making any real impact over the signal. Just make sure the buffers are high quality. There is however a mental rejection to the idea of running your guitar signal through multiple pieces of cheap electronics before it gets to your amp. It's not the best way to ensure that your signal is going to get there unaltered and it does sort of defeat the purpose of you buying that very expensive guitar and amp to get that tone you love so much. While not a necessity, I would advise using as few buffered bypass pedals in your signal chain as possible and ensuring that the ones you do have are not adversely affecting your tone. From personal experience, I would advise being very careful around Boss and Crybaby pedals for that reason. <laughs> And if you can, get yourself a dedicated buffer like this one and do some experiments with different positions and different combinations of pedals and see the improvements it makes for yourself. This is a video that I've been wanting to make for a long time. I just want to say thank you to TC Electronic for sending across the Bonafide buffer to help me do so. This is brand new for NAMM 2016, so by the time you see this video, it should have been announced because uh, you've seen this video in the future and I'm filming it in the beginning of January and I'm still not supposed to be talking about it yet. This was the one thing that was missing from TC Electronics lineup. Every other pedal they've got has been true bypass, and as described just a couple of minutes ago, that can be a problem if you want to use a lot of their stuff together. So I'm glad they've addressed that issue and brought out the buffer. Uh, this will be fantastic to go along with all you guys who've got pedal boards that are just TC or just true bypass. Definitely check this out if you agree with everything that I've just said in the video, and you should because it's physics and it's real and it's true. Of course, this isn't my only video, I have a lot of others, and if you want to see the new ones that are coming out, and hopefully they'll be as educational as this one was, then you can click that subscribe button and see everything new that comes out. I'm also available on all those social media places, and you can leave a comment in the comment section below if you want to talk to me about anything, tell me about your pedal board setups, and what you think about True Bypass. Anyway, that's all for this now, so if you want to keep it loud, I'll see you later.